Alright, it is day 553 off the grid and I haven't fucked around for too long getting on to reusing this 140 watt polycrystalline panel well it's a cracked panel that I got cheap it's been up on the roof for the better part of two years or so can't remember exactly when I put it up I'd have to go back and watch my old videos but it's been up there for quite a while I just used some clear coat on it and it seems to be holding up quite nicely I, this was the panel I took off the roof the other day to put the amorphous one up I'll oh, have a quick look at that oh there it is up there there just underneath that that's an end one on the left there the three one two three and just in front of that there it is oh yeah you can see it a bit better there it's performing really really well in fact since that's not really in a direct sun position well obviously not now at the end of the day but it's in a summer position and we're in winter um, the performance deficit from that versus 140 which I originally had up there is not that much but now the 140 is in a much better position to take advantage of winter sun so I'll be getting the full use out of that during most of the day so again I've done one of my quick and dirty mounts quick and dirty ground mounts about the simplest arrangement you could possibly do for a solar panel but it seems to work Here's my original, it's been there for quite some time now, it's robust as. And here's the new one, number of changes and improvements, well not necessarily improvements but there's some improvements. I didn't have a heavy post that was long enough so I just bash that one in as far as I ought to and then I just use this it's a piece of treated fence fence post basically to be the upright and put this crossbar on it pretty simple quick and dirty I've nailed these with 90 millimeter and 100 millimeter nails and use construction adhesive so it's going to be pretty robust I may reinforce this with some kind of strapping or extra strength at the back at some point, but for now that'll do. I use some aluminium brackets this time that I already had. I don't know why I didn't use them for the other one, but maybe I was trying to save them, but this time I had no intention of doing that. To make it a lot quicker and easier, I just used a tech screw and drilled straight into the metal of the drill so it drills in screws in one operation and that is solid as so I don't have to fiddle around with nuts on the inside of the solar panel which is always a pain in the ass so and over this side I did the same thing but I was lucky enough to even find a wood one you don't use metal ones into wood but that's actually a wood one so you know solid but down here though I think is the biggest improvement you notice that the battery I'm using is actually significantly smaller than the one I used for the other panel and this is a 140 watt panel so it's a bigger panel, smaller battery well for one thing the terminals were positioned on the battery in such a way there was a better centre of gravity so the battery is less likely to tip under any sort of external forces this has allowed me to not sink this one as deep into the ground so it's a bit raised up a little bit higher which I like and that was all good on its own, but then I suddenly had the conclusion, it just dawned on me, an uh, obvious thing. Why not just drive a stake in front of the battery? That would stop any possibility of tipping. So I found this piece of old Waratah and drove it in and made a cap out of an old medicine bottle and just stuck it on. So that's really good. I'm really pleased with that. I probably won't even need to add the screws on top of these ones because that's holding in quite nicely. I was thinking about putting something around the back to just clamp it on. Of course there's no reason why <laughs> I can't just improve this one by driving in the um, Waratah or whatever at the front there, but I didn't drive this one in while the panel was in place. I didn't want to be swinging a sledgehammer around with the panel just right behind it. So yeah, so that's basically what I did. 
I reckon it's the quickest, cheapest and easiest mount you can do for a ground mount panel that's reasonably secure and this cost me nothing because it was an old battery I had lying around one of my original house truck batteries as it happens long since beyond useful service probably haven't sent it back to the scrappers only because of sentimental value because the battery I have for so long well now it's there all these woods here Fox and Beach um, this was actually pick this up near the lake and live in these are other bits of wood actually as it happens but you know all scrap wood all free so the only thing I really paid for in this is the um, tech screws and I guess these angle brackets came that came with the BP panels I guess in a sense I paid for them because they came with the BP panels but as you'll notice it's not running anywhere at the moment it's not plugged in I haven't got around to that and I won't be doing that today it's the end of the day and um, I think I've done enough for today I'm gonna muck around the cold I've got to clean out the fireplace and cut some firewood now anyway and I don't want to leave that too long so I'm just basically making this video then getting to it but yeah I just got to run a cable to the power room which of course is right here so it's not a biggie the biggest question is is where to actually connect the solar panel into the system I mean there's a few options I've got I mean the simplest and obvious would be to just tie it into the main bus and it just becomes part of the roof panels and some of the ground panels and you know it just helps feed all the batteries that would be a obvious thing to do and nothing wrong with doing that but another option is to tie it through its own charge controller to a specific battery bank which I'm kind of keen on because A I wouldn't mind the A batteries getting a little bit more of their share of the current and B I've got a 10 amp MPPT controller which I've been wanting to try out and this panel would be an ideal match for it and I'll find out a bit more about this MPPT Lark because at the moment I'm not running any at all. So it would be interesting to see. It'd be kind of good to get a couple of extra amps out of this panel reaming into the A batteries. Although I'm also kind of trying to come up with schemes that I could put one panel through the MPPT controller and then connect the output of that to the entire system so therefore the MPPT controller would boost the output of that one panel but just feed it into the main system. There's a couple of issues that would have to be overcome with that but one other issue with that is that it's kind of wasting the charge controller abilities of the MPPT I mean if you're going to do that you'd probably be better off just using a simple buck converter and just setting it to near MPPT and just leaving it at that I reckon be a lot cheaper because if it's connected to the main system and any sort of interpretation it does of charge of the batteries is going to be irrelevant so we'll see we'll see uh, I'm quite pleased to have put this up you know quite pleased to have you know got it out from doing nothing so quickly and getting it back up and yeah, so there we have it, day 353 off the grid.